So in the last part, we had created the basic UI of our Snapchat application. In this part, we'll build the camera UI. So what we want is the moment the user opens the app, he should have the camera just like the Snapchat application. So let's create a new file here. So in our root folder, we'll create a new folder called components. And inside that, we'll create a new file called camera.js. Let's just create a basic class and let's call it camera component. Come back to the app.js and here inside where we've got the camera text, let's get rid of that. Put in our camera component here and let's import camera here at the top as well. So we'll say import camera from go into our components folder and camera.js. And as we can see, we're getting the text camera component from this file. Now we're going to be using the camera component that Expo provides us. So here on top, let's import certain things. So we'll import camera and permissions from Expo. Inside our class, let's set up a state. So we'll say state is equal to, let's call it has camera permission and set that to null. And also let's set the type to camera.constants dot type dot back. This is basically the back camera, which is going to open up by default. Next, we need to ask the user for permission to use the camera that we'll do inside the component will mount method. So we'll create an asynchronous component will mount. Inside this, let's create a constant called status and we'll store the status from asking the user for the permission. So we'll say permissions dot ask async and inside that we'll say permissions dot camera. And here I'm missing equal to. Next, once the user is granted or denied permission, we have to set that. So we'll say this dot set state. And we'll update the has camera permission depending on whether the status was granted or denied. So if status is equal equal to granted, we'll return true. Otherwise we'll return false. Also, I just realized that I've spelled this wrong. This should be has camera. Now let's display the camera. So inside the render method, let's get rid of this return here. Let's store has camera permission into a constant. So now let's check if has camera permission is equal equal to null. That is the user didn't select allow or deny. The user just exited the box when it came up. We'll return an empty view. So it's a return view else if has camera permission is equal equal to false then we return a text which says no access to camera otherwise the user has allowed the use of the camera and we should display the camera so let's put in a view here inside that we'll put in the camera So let's give the view a flex of one and also give the camera a flex of one. We'll also set the type of camera to the back camera. So if you remember here at the top in the state, we've set that. So let's say this dot state dot type. Let's save that. And here I forgot to return this. So let's put in return here. So as of now, inside of the camera, we're getting a blue screen. That's because in the app.js, if you remember, we had set these styles.slide default. In that, we basically are justifying the content to the center and the align items are center with this background color. So let's get rid of that here and let's just give this a flex of one. So now we've got a black screen. Basically, this is the camera that's displaying, but on the simulator, you'll just see a black screen. When you test it out on your phone, you'll get the camera. Now let's style the camera screen. So in camera.js, we'll start by importing certain things from native base. So we've imported the container, content, header, item, icon, input, and button. You will see we'll be using all of these in our app. And also we need a couple of icons that are available in the material icons, which are provided by Expo. So let's import those also. So let's call that material community icon. 
and we'll import that from react native vector icons these are provided by expo and inside that we need the material community icons so first let's create our header here so inside the camera component let's put in the header we need to make the header transparent so that the camera is displayed through it so for that we'll make the header absolutely positioned so we'll say position absolute give it a background color of transparent position 0 from the left 0 from the top and 0 from the right let's give it a z index of about 100 so that it's always on top and let's save that out let's just have a look at what we're trying to achieve so here we're trying to create this header on the top here right now so native base provides us with a neat search bar inside the header so let's say let's put a search bar here and we'll make it rounded as well now inside the header what we'll do is we'll make this snapchat icon and this search bar in one box and we'll make these two icons in one box so we'll put in a view and we'll put in a flex direction of row so let's put in a view here let's give it a flex direction of row and we'll give it a flex of four because you want the icon and the search bar to take up more space than the other two icons. And then let's put in our icon. So we'll say icon name logo Snapchat. Let's style it. Give it a color of white. And let's close out the icon. So there we can see we're getting the icon. Next, we need to put in an input, which we'll put inside an item field. Again, the item should be transparent so that we can see through it. So we'll say background color, transparent. Inside the item, we'll put in an icon. This one will be called iOS search. And again, style it to be a color of white. As you can see that the icon is a little small, so let's increase the size. Font size of 24 and a font weight of bold. That makes it a little bigger, but they seem to not be aligned. For that, let's come to the header and let's give it an align items property of center. That makes them vertically aligned. Along with this icon, we need an input. Let's make that a self-closing tag. And here, let's put in a placeholder. Let's call that search. And let's set the placeholder text color to white. And there we can see we're getting the search text as well. Now let's set up these other two icons. So let's create another view outside this view. Again, we'll give this view a flex direction of row and a flex of two. Inside that, let's put in the first icon. So it's called iOS flash. And let's just style that with the color of white. And a font weight of bold let's just close out the tag so there we have our flash icon and i'll just copy this icon for the camera icon just rename this to ios reverse camera and save that out as you can see that the icons are very close to each other so here what we'll do is we'll put in justify content of space around so that they're nicely spaced and inside the icon we'll put in an on press method which changes the type of camera so we'll say on press is equal to here we'll say this dot set state we'll say type and we'll use a conditional to change the type so we'll say this dot state dot type if it's equal equal to the back camera that is camera dot constants dot type dot back then change it over to the front camera otherwise change it to the back camera Next, we need to get these icons that are there at the bottom. For that, let's create another view, which will be outside the header. So let's say view, we'll give it a flex direction of row again. We'll say justify content space between so that the icons are equally spaced horizontally. 
Let's put in the first icon. See here, we're going to be using the material icon that we'd imported. So we say material community icons. The name of the icon is going to be message reply. And let's close that out. Let's just style the icon. Color again is going to be white. We're just going to give it a slightly bigger font size of 36. As we can see, this icon is going out on the top left. We want it to be here right at the bottom. So for that, what we need to do is we need to come here to the main camera view. And in the style here, what we'll do is we'll say justify content space between. And as we can see that the icon has gone here right at the bottom. Also to this view, let's add a padding here. So we'll say padding horizontal of 10 and we'll give it a margin bottom of 15. Now let's print the other icons. So we're just going to need an icon name and this is going to be called iOS images. And I'll just paste the style in. And the third icon is again going to be a material icon. So let's copy that. And that one is called Google Circles Community. Communities. So there we can see we're getting our three icons, but here we need one bigger icon here, which is on top of this one. So we'll put this middle icon into another view. By default, it has a flex direction of a column. So we'll just say style is equal to align items center. And let's just put in the icon. That's also a material icon. So I'll just paste it in here and it's going to be called circle outline. And the font size is going to be much bigger of 100. Now, as you can see, these icons have moved up with this icon. So to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the line items here and say flex end so that they move to the bottom. So as you can see, we've got all the icons that we need for our Snapchat app. And if you test this out on your mobile device, you'll see that you press this button and the camera flips. And also right now, if we swipe to the right, we can see stories comes up and we swipe to the opposite direction. We get chat. If we swipe down, we get the search screen and if we swipe up. We get the memory screen. I hope you guys like this and try this out.